coming up tonight on Game All Night, I'm joined by Matt, Josh, and Anne of Twist Gaming. This week and each week is brought to you by Game Toppers. Check them out at GameToppersLLC.com. Welcome to Game All Night! Well, hello everyone and welcome to another Game All Night. I'm your host, Chris Whiphan, joined with me tonight by Mr. Dan, Bartender Dan. How we doing, sir? Doing real good. Doing real good? Well, we have in the, we, we can't call it the green room tonight, Dan. No. No. And you're going to see why, because it's, uh, it's kind of purple. Mm. It's kind of their thing. But we got the, uh, the we, we don't have just, in, in a game all night show first we don't have one we don't have two we have three guests because they're all a type personalities and no one could decide to step forward so <laughs> we'll get to that when we get to that but meanwhile what what are we drinking tonight yeah we got some cool stuff so um so i'm drinking one from an american pale ale from star hill brewery and they are a cool brewery out of uh, out of virginia there nice um their name the star hill name comes from a uh, a club music hall venue that in the charlottesville area that, that no longer exists but they have maintained that commitment to like live music so their tap room also doubles as a as a live music venue um and they do like beer festivals and, and they got big at bonnaroo a couple of years ago they are um uh, it's, it's part of their DNA, and it's a pretty cool thing. That's very cool. You, meanwhile, are drinking one from hmm. Clown Shoes. They're I like little, me Clown Shoes. Yeah, we've got a little, like, Captain Marvel action here with their Galactica All right. IPA. Not shockingly featuring their uh, Galaxy Hops. Yeah, I believe this was one that was left by our friend of the show, Mr. Gilmelo. He has tremendous taste in, in hops there. Because, and uh, friends. <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, so it actually raises a question for me because they, they specifically brand this guy as a, a double IPA. Mm -hmm. uh, but where do you fall on the, the, the nomenclature there? Is it double IPA for you or imperial uh, IPA? So I'm going to go with the double because it's pretty much like it's imperial just implies more of a fine hop, not to like more of a strict single hop. Mm. Whereas to me, double IPA just more of a good thing gotcha. and then new england would be nice and hazy and cloudy and all that goodness but we can talk about ipa all night mr dan but let's let's bring on our special guest tonight so we are joined by matt and and josh of twist gaming tv so they do uh they do live streams and uh they they don't get to drink very often so we, we yeah. gave them the opportunity tonight right Yes. I'm, I'm very happy about the opportunity to drink on camera tonight. <laughs> I have to say that. Well, yeah, you know, they're... you spill your beer once on set, take out two microphones, you know, you tend to get a reputation. It's... No comment. <laughs> <laughs> No, the conversation in the beginning is great. My uh, fiance is a hophead, so this is very much so. He's got nobody to talk to, so he kind of talks at me about this stuff. Fair. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so what are we drinking tonight in there? Well, so I'm drinking, I, I'm, well, I'm going to start off with saying I'm a little disappointed because I went to Publix and I was planning on getting Purple Haze, both because I like it and thematically, I mean, come on. Right, and uh, you know, a beat is relatively local for y'all. It's, it's right around the corner, but Not instead, since they were out, I got a uh, Guayabara, Guayabara Citra Pale Ale from Cigar City Brewing Company. And and Cigar I, City's I, decent, yeah. I'm enjoying it very much so. But, uh, Chris, to go back to your drink for a second, you said you got the clown shoes, correct? Yes, sir. I have to ask, does it smell funny? Um, but no, no, it's, it smells just fine. Although I will tell you, uh, one of the favorite clown shoe beers of mine is actually Tramp Stamp. But, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> swear to God, that's a, that's a whole other story and a whole other show. All right, all right. We need a technical... <laughs> Do we need a technical timeout to install a rim shot button here on my... Uh, uh, no, you will get no such thing. No. No. <laughs> I control gotcha. when my joke hits or not. That's, you don't get that say. 
<laughs> Excellent. Are you drinking anything in? Yeah, so I, like I said, uh, my fiance is a hophead, and I know that this is going to get a lot of uh, shame, uh, but I hate beer. I think beer's gross, uh, but since he got is super into the craft beers, he's gotten me into, like, craft ciders. All right. Uh, so I have my Woodchuck Hard Cider. It's the winter chill, so we're out of season. It's not super crafty. It's a little more mainstream than some of the stuff I drink. But it was on sale. Thanks, Matt. There you go. But it's yummy. Well ciders are great they're kind of the uh the ticket to ride you know we're getting you we're starting you out nice and easy um and we'll we'll get you there eventually but we gotta one one mechanic at a time right exactly next will exactly. be a dry hop cider and then we can start I, working on the rest i foray into meads every once in a while b nectar meadery is fantastic okay so that's like ticket to ride europe you know you're, yeah. now you're starting to add stations and tunnels <laughs> starting to get a little crazy Good. I like it. I like it. Started down the dark path. Exactly. And for you, Josh. I'm not a drinker, so Matt got me Red Rock Golden Ginger Ale. Some oh. fancy ginger ale. It's some fancy ginger ale. It, it, it just says over a century of just the right bite. It does have a bite. It's really weird. Is it just right? Uh, it's a little too much for me, actually. <laughs> Matt, you probably would like this. Oh, but, I, get, you know, I get ginger. You just have a bite. So it's ginger ale, not ginger beer, because there's some spicy, peppery ginger beers out there. It is. This has got some spicy peppery to it. I'm, yeah, I'm surprised. Nice. Yeah. It, it, it's not my thing, but I, I thought you would like that, Matt. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I bought it for you. <laughs> so that I can have it later. Exactly. You can make a mule out of that. I'm sure it'd be fine. Kentucky <laughs> mule be great. <laughs> so I had the pleasure of actually getting to meet you guys at Origins this year because you guys were doing a lot of live streaming and things like that. Well, everybody but Matthew. Apparently, they left you home. Um, you know, they, they didn't allow me to go to Origins. I don't. They know brought why. little mini flat ones of him and put him all over the hall. flat mat. He, he, he had more visual exposure than both. I provided. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> so I did get to hang out with you guys, and, and we learned a new trick that you'll see on game night just from you guys. Um, that kind of came in handy. Um, yeah, I saw, I saw your little beer can. Yeah, yeah you saw that. that? Was, yeah, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> see you see you learn things see, that's what's great about this business right we get to learn things from each other so i find did that you do that awesome. did you do that with glass no that was cans um no, I just, it, <laughs> just, dan's got to go over and put it under the camera it's, it's <laughs> he has to walk all the way from over in the bar come up in front of the camera and just try to go <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's a very manual system we tried it with a monkey, but it was very unreliable. Very <laughs> wasn't any good. The monkey was the beer wasn't making it to the camera. There was stops in between. Exactly, and then every now and then he would just stop and do that thing. You know, <laughs> the evil monkey from yes. the stare. Yes, my name's Chris. It works on two levels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow. You, I found out more about you guys. Like I, I always knew about you and what you did, but I didn't actually get it until we were at Origins and I started looking into it. So why don't you guys just because a lot of my viewership's more static viewership. So what, what is so different about what you guys do versus what we do here? We have Matt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so so we have the con list sorted out. Where's the the pro list? <laughs> well, then there's Josh. I mean, if we're going from, you know, that or, and then we're working up. And then there's me. Okay. Sure. Um, okay. That's good. You want to you want to give the spiel? Sure, yeah. I'll give the spiel. So, in all seriousness, what we think sets us a little bit apart from the other streamers, broadcasters, YouTubers is uh interactivity and I mean, being on a live platform obviously helps pretty significantly with that. Uh, but Josh, being a software engineer by trade, you can wave at the camera there, Josh. There you go. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's developed some really great overlays and uh, chat, like commands, chat commands and programming uh, that we use within our stream to make it, one, more streamlined, uh, and two, make it as interactive as possible. So we do a lot of Twitch plays streams. Uh, we stream on Twitch. And right. uh, with those Twitch plays, we have our viewers in chat making decisions by either just yelling them out in chat or voting in polls and then yell, uh, yelling. Oh, yelling's true too. Um, rolling dice for everything. Uh, <laughs> and swanky visual overlays yeah. that you made too, where they can like click around the screen and select yeah. things that way. I don't know how you did it. It's basically magic to me. 
but it's awesome. Yeah, he really has done, outdone himself with Madara. You know, we, we started the stream about three years ago, and we've improved on our interactivity capabilities as we've progressed. And Madara is a game that has a ton of dice and a ton of different mm -hmm. colored dice. Uh, and the iconography on, you know, the D6 is different from game to game. So Madara has got a ton of different iconography and Josh worked really hard and he's got the overlay. So when our audience and their hive mind rolls a particular die, the die image and the die face will come up on the screen. So it, it just continues to bring our audience that immersive experience. And mm -hmm. that's really what we, we're going for for all of our stream. It's, it flows through to the con coverage and our con attendance. Um, you know, Chris, you joined me on stream for one of our interviews and the concept there is that for the people that can't make it out to the convention or the people that are sick and tired of the exhibitor floor because it's packed and are in a corner somewhere or <laughs> just huddled missed, up crying yeah. quietly to themselves. Oh, I get that feeling. Yeah, or they've missed a publisher or they or a publisher has a game that they don't have out in the booth, but they'll come bring to right. us. The point is to kind of give everybody that front row seat. You know, you can stop by a publisher's booth at the convention with 800 bajillion people around and do a quick demo, or you can log into the show and it's me and one of the, you know, gamer insiders and we'll go, you know, with you, Chris, we'll go live through the thing. And because everything's live, if you're logged into the chat, you can ask these questions directly to these people as the show is going on. The hard hitting questions. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's all, it's all about interactivity and community and what other buzzwords can I throw in there? I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're definitely getting a lot of draw on both sides. Like you're getting the, you know, people who want to play along, but then also those people who want to see things. And I thought it was very, very cool because, you know, a lot of these things are just kind of like, oh, just show off your thing. Oh, that's cool. Let's go. But you kind of really added two extra pieces to it by having different creators come in and then also by actually involving an audience which i don't i don't know that there's anybody else who does that so you kind of do get that extra kind of feel like if you're at the convention you could still do this and then go over to the booth and make an informed decision right and more time to play less time to chat <laughs> more or less or more you know it's easier to see more things you don't have the physical space you're not running from one side of the convention floor to the other and two you know the board game industry is really small and we've developed a lot of relationships with really awesome people content creators as including you chris like we're so happy that you were able to join us on stream where we love collaborating with their content creators um but there sometimes we'll get publishers who are like look i don't have this out in the booth yet <laughs> or it just came in last night but i'm going to show fresh it fresh off the boat literally yeah but i'm going to show it off on your stream so even if you're at the convention maybe you're logged in to see something that is not on the floor yeah. Right, so you get oh, you get you get to see some cool stuff. Like we were at Gamma, and like, oh, the manufacturer was here, and he just handed me this box two hours ago. I haven't even opened it yet to see if it's good. <laughs> we're opening it all on stream. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it awesome. So, and well, the fact that you guys can, stuff. yeah, and the fact that you can kind of pack everything up because let's face it, <laughs> we just had this long discussion about traveling with, with gear and things like that. And I've never broadcast and done anything from a show. I've always had good intentions and I take a <laughs> kit to do stuff, but I end up not actually doing it because I'm like, I don't want to get it out. I don't really want to <laughs> have to shave today. <laughs> I, don't, I have to put on a shirt. Like, no, it's just like, no, there's, there's all those things that it's, it's a lot of work to like go to a show and then not all, you don't get a chance to enjoy it much if you're doing all the streams all the time. So you have to find your love there, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've Josh and I have this kind of funny story that we like to tell about Gen Con in particular, where last year when we were there, or two years oh, two ago, years rather, ago. we were at the JW Marriott. For those of you who have been to Gen Con, it's connected via the Skywalk there. Yeah. And we were filming live interviews on the floor, like, easily 10 12 hour days of streaming and media coverage yeah and near the last day it might have been the last day of the convention josh and i walked outside for something and we turned to each other and we go oh my god <laughs> this is the first time we've been outside <laughs> in five days <laughs> this is what this the is so fresh air is like. yeah i think it was night time but like oh, it's fresh air there's a breeze this is wonderful yeah it was really toward the end of the con <laughs> we i had gone out because we were looking for the other building where I hosted the first um, women in tabletop gaming uh, panel, which was so cool. 
Um, so it was in the other building, and but we didn't know where where this building was. I think it's the only reason I didn't use that sky bridge. Oh, yeah, that was a velocity bar, and uh, yeah, we we ate at the velocity bar far too many times. We we don't have very much love for it anymore. So but you know, we have to change things up a little bit. Back to the point about lugging around all the equipment. Yeah. Um, you two, like, so when we started this show. And I don't know. Look, Chris, I'm not used to being on this side of the interview table. So <laughs> rail on your questions. You're going to have to let me know. Um, Sorry, I'll email you the list when we're on break. <laughs> improved. <laughs> so when we started this, we started it with a cell phone and a mic, like doing our, con con our, our, our convention coverage with the cell phone and a mic. So uh, that giant setup has gone to be what you got to see at Origins, including that massive, obnoxious purple banner. And these, you know, the guys were yelling, like laughing because I think this is the first time Josh and I alone have gone and yeah. brought the entire studio set up. Yeah. Like it takes all three of us in an airport to lug all that stuff around. And thank God for media passes because the overage charges on that stuff are, is just insane. Yeah. yeah, we conservatively have roughly 400 pounds of gear that we travel with. That's not including our personal effects. That's just yeah. stream stuff. <laughs> Your, your carry-on bag <laughs> is now going to be the stream computer. Yep. Yeah. So really, you don't have four purple polos. You really just have one. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make room for all the cables. I'm just saying, you know, some baby wipes go a long way after a long day. <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. Well, you just buy the cables on Amazon, have them shipped to the hotel, and then leave them when you leave. It's just... <laughs> I'm but then you never know what you're going to get either, because like, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, when you had set up in the uh, the area you had, it's like, well, we were just going to move the TV. Then we found out it's bolted to the wall. <laughs> like <you're> not, <laughs> yeah. Things don't move and behave. And all of a sudden you're like, what hotel doesn't have an HDMI TV? Come on, you know, or it's locked down. It's crazy. It's nice being content creators that do things live because I feel like you learn how to roll with the punches. Mm. Right? Fair. So, or roll for radio. So yeah, <laughs> I, that's the story that I thought you were going to, I don't know if we told you, Chris, I don't know how many people we told. So <laughs> when we set up that whole studio setup, we had a new soundboard that we brought with us. And for whatever reason, whether it's unshielded cables or, or whatnot, our, my, our soundboard was picking up radio, like somebody's <laughs> radio from another room. And we're freaking out because you can hear it through the stream. So it was a matter of like next day, you know, next day in a brand new soundboard, trying to figure, you know, you, you learn to roll with the punches to make it work. Eventually we did, but it's, that's like the weirdest things, man, that you got to learn how to work and with. Then, and then you're very grateful for the Amazon return policy and its fluidity. It's, uh, believe me, I know, I know. The other, the other fun thing that you had to overcome was the, uh, the rather loud LARPing that was going on adjacent to you as well. <laughs> you didn't tell me about there this. There was one. Star Wars LARPing on our floor. Well, that just sounds Origin. amazing. It was, but we couldn't participate. No. But we don't. <laughs> I didn't I mean, even tell me about it. That's part they're of the reason legit we got running around with like ray guns, and yeah. there there was even a couple of lightsabers running out there. I'm, uh, there was I'm a jelly. lightsaber duel or two outside our door. <laughs> 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 But at least you guys were, they seem to be relatively considerate and understanding. So that was cool at least. But I'm like, it's all crazy. Like who would think that you could just like, we're just going to do this on this floor. You, Welcome you to Origins. Have, yeah, you, you don't have to clear that with anybody. No, nope, we're just going to use the building in the hallway. It's fine. <laughs> the maid's good. She, Rosario's good with it. We'll make it happen. Oh, she was actually LARPing along, I'm sure, right? <laughs> she Princess is. Leia buns on. And... There you go. Absolutely. So what made you guys decide with your cell phone and your single microphone to say, we should stream, we should do this. How, where, so, Josh, what's you the genesis Wait, of this? We have three rules on our channel. Okay. Go ahead. One and two. Oh, okay. So rule one is don't be mean. Yeah. Rule okay. two is don't be a creep. And rule three, because I got to write the rules, was it's always Josh's fault. So the reason <laughs> this stream started is it's all Josh's fault. Okay. Uh, That's fair. So the, re the reason the stream started was three plus years ago now. Yep. Um, I just got a new game called Kingdom Death Monster. I think a few people have heard of that one. A few people have heard of it. And uh, Matt and I were a little obsessive over it. We were playing 
constantly. Nerd. <laughs> and uh, one day we just go, I go, I'm like, Matt, I have an idea. I want to do like Twitch plays Pokemon, but Twitch plays board games. And he's like, that cool. sounds cool. Yeah, I'm like, we can do on. Kingdom Death Monster. There's a cool little community behind it. I, I think this might work. Uh, we did our first stream. It blew up more than we ever expected. Um, hmm. and, and it's just been a crazy ride since then um, for something that we thought, hey, we'll do this for fun. And then three years later, like, oh, we have a full studio set up. And <laughs> yeah, your front living room is purple now. Yeah, my front living room is purple. I, I, my, like, my walls have become purple now. Like, it's, I, I'll be honest with you, that may have happened anyway. But, you know, maybe <laughs> um, I have a purple couch that you can't see. We have purple accent lighting. Like, like it's it's, yeah. it's pretty intense. It, it's it's become its own little thing. I, I don't have a living room anymore. I have yeah. a studio. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Now, now, my question is, is I, I do recognize that there's purple everywhere. But yes. do you off the top of your head know what the hex code is for the purple you use? No, no, really? I don't. I, I have to look it up every single freaking time because <laughs> you don't remember the code. I'm so I'm saying, surprised. If, if someone knew, it would be Josh. Yeah, it would if, be. If, 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 That's why I had to ask. <laughs> I, I'm bad at remembering like sequences of numbers and letters. Because the only reason, like, there's multiple reasons why you would be the one to remember. One is because you do everything digitally for the show. Yes. You're kind of the the computer mm -hmm. wizard. Yeah. Yeah. And then two, you you are colorblind. Yeah, I'm colorblind. I, I I can't pick out blue and purple from each other, so I have to look up the hex code to like be like, yeah, that that is purple. That there is the go. purple, yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I sadly I don't. I well, don't I'm impressed I because you're when when you get into these minutia of colors and purple, and for me it's my my blues. It's like, man, that there's a lot of variants in there. So it, it's impressive that you can get you know a fireplace, a jacket, uh, a screen cover, a unicorn shirt, and hair <laughs> that's all the same color. Like that's that's <laughs> kind of amazing. Yes, me. <laughs> I yeah. just make sure the product listing says purple, or I, I send pictures to Ann and Matt. Be like, "Is yeah. this purple?" Yeah, he's he's done that quite a few times where he <laughs> sends me pictures of things and he goes, "Is this purple?" <laughs> and I respond back, "No, Joshua, those are blue." <laughs> Which happened at a convention actually, where socks? Josh bought a pack of assorted purple dress socks to wear to the convention. It was purple and blue socks. Sure, yeah. and so he he was wearing blue socks one day. I'm like, "Josh, why are you wearing blue socks?" He's like, "These aren't blue. These are purple." <laughs> I love how he has to stand up for himself. It's like yeah. he, he probably knows better, but you know, oh, I, I gotta, I gotta give myself some like some credibility and try at least. You know, do you, no, you could do like oh. you know a trick, like you know, you put a staple in all the ones that are purple, or you know, you can do those things. You know, right? Isn't that, isn't that what like people? I, I have, might like, have like take all my socks out, I put them on my bed, and I send a picture to Anne and be like, "Which ones are the purple ones?" Yeah. So I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what I'm hearing is Josh would benefit from Dranimals. That's really where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> like you need, yes. All the all the ones that are unicorns, you can wear. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So it just kind of grew out of KDM and just kind of, was it having to, we need to make some money back so we can afford the small mortgage we had to take out to purchase everything? Or was it just, you know, just trying to have fun? Because I know Twitch for a long time didn't actually stream board games at all. Yeah, so we were actually the first partnered board game streamer, like yeah. solely yeah, wow. board game streamer. Um, so that was a huge step for us because we were trying for a while to break through that uh, and we wall got, of partnership. We got our partnership in December of some... December. We started in May, 17? so like eight months. Sure, that sounds about right. like we got it pretty quickly. Like, but I mean, a big part of that is, as Josh was saying, we were actually really closely involved in the Kingdom Death uh, Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, yeah. Where they tweeted out at us and then included us within the Kickstarter pledge levels themselves, and actually issued a was, challenge yeah. directly to we, us. We had challenges, so <laughs> everyone from the Kickstarter would come in and be like, "All right, if they win tonight, we're gonna unlock something. If they lose, something else will happen." And uh, it became an interesting dynamic because. It was out through the whole campaign. Uh, we had some death threats and stuff too. It was it was a. I don't think any of them experience. were particularly serious, yeah. but at the uh, same time, I mean, it is the middle name of the game. <laughs> yeah, but um, um, jumping back to the to the base question there of why did we try and monetize this thing? And we actually started out before Twist as a PGS Precision Gaming Solutions. Yeah. and so we were actually manufacturing board game accessories, high end board game accessories. Okay. We started out doing that, and then that kind of transitioned into Twist with our obsessive playing of board games. Yeah. 
Uh, and Twist was going to be like an idea for marketing our products. And then it just became, no, this is its own beast. We're not. This is where we're going. We're going to stop making products because this is much easier. Well, not really. It's a lot more fun. It's more fun. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily easier. Uh, but we've also had a really awesome community that's helped fund everything and, and kind of help us get the new equipment and stuff so we can make the show better. Um, and our, like I, our community is really awesome and it's been helping us out. So um, it sounds like it, it's, it's the inner. Yeah, it sounds like it's really the interaction that kind of got you into it in the first place with, you know, the KDM plays and everything like that, you know, and it it's, I find it very interesting that that's now what you guys consider the hallmark of what sets you apart and makes you different. I think that's kind of awesome. Yeah, the, jumping into it from the very beginning, that's what we were like, we have to do something different. Yeah. And the the basis of Twitch plays Pokemon, but for board games is kind of because I like I don't know how in tune you were with Twitch plays Pokemon in the very beginning, but it was a chaotic mess of nonsense happening. And that's what we actually wanted. And it still shines through in our Twitch plays board games, because when you hive mind important decisions to a crowd of anonymous people, you get wacky results. Yeet. Yeet. Yeah. <laughs> we were just playing uh, Twitch plays Bodie Madara. Bodhi <laughs> Yeah, that's what happened. And uh, we had a scene where uh, Josh is playing as a character Rook from the campaign, and Twitch is playing a character called Nightingale. We're at the end of one of the levels, and they're like, "Okay, we need to get over this ravine. This cat, you know, this this." We need to get to the other side of the map where they chasm. Can walk, chasm, you chasm, on, it's not chasm, chasm on the floor. <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, how are we doing it? Are we going to walk around nicely? And Matt's like, no, we're going to yeet. Apparently, that's what the kids are saying nowadays. We're going to yeet the princess across the chasm. <laughs> so that's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun to see what our community can and, come and up with. And they were yoted. Yoted? <laughs> yoted? I, I don't know what the uh, proper past mm. tense of yeet is. Yeet, yoted, yawn? I don't know. <laughs> it's not gonna be a thing. Yep, totally. So, so where did you factor in? And were you like, like, how did you? Because obviously you weren't involved in these first few plays. When did you kind of say this is cool? I want to get in there. Did they just drag you down with them, or what happened? So I, maybe not the first show, but I've definitely been around since the beginning. I like to tell people that um, I met Josh in college. Uh, Josh and I worked on a group project together nice. for advanced system analysis and design. And since then, I've been stuck on a group project with him. <laughs> God help me. Twist gaming. Blink twice if you can't be safe. Yes. Uh, so I, uh, I like video games. I've always been a video game player since I was growing up. It was in a way to connect with my mother, of all people. So I'm second generation gamer, and my kids are third generation gamers. Um, and... Josh and I had hung out doing a lot of group projects and stuff. Uh, there was a um, a bachelor party they were going to. Josh had a bachelor party, and the bachelor party, like they were all playing board games. And I was like, man, I know <laughs> the bachelor hurts. party <laughs> looks like a lot of fun. They're all, kind of, you know, we're going out, we're gonna have fun. But I would really much rather sit here and play board games. And, and I was like, guys, like, can I play? <laughs> can, can I play? Like Josh hosts like board game hosted board game parties at his house. And stuff, and that's kind of slowly how I got into it. So I would definitely say I'm probably the newest to board games, but not gaming in general. Gotcha. Cool, cool. Well, I think this is a great point to pause because uh, we're going to come back and talk to you, talk to you about what's coming in the future for year four and beyond. So we're going to have to do that, but I, I got to make my audience suffer through uh, one of one of Patrick Hillier's wonderful puns. So we're going to be right back with Twist Gaming after this. Game All Night is a proud member of Punchboard Media. Be sure to check out tons of other great shows at punchboardmedia.com. Puntifications with Patrick Hillier. I was walking through a quarry and said to the foreman, that's a big rock. Older, he replied. So I puffed out my chest and shouted, that's an enormous rock over there. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 
they all stayed, believe it or not. Um, they may have different beverages in front of them because, you know, things were spicy, apparently. But um, we do have Twist Gaming joining us again, as has been the case for the last half hour. So, so guys, you, you've been at this three years and late and late. What is coming in year four? Apparently, Joshua's television. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, you know, so, the, the purple's supposed to be a royal color, but, you know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, in year four, and do you want to take this one? So, uh, currently, we are gearing up to launch our Kickstarter. Uh, so, at the time of the recording, our Kickstarter is going to be launching on Monday, July 15th. That's soon. Ah, soon. <laughs> Which, fun. actually, I think is three days in the past from the time this goes up. I love how time works. It's uh, cool, so, timey wimey and all that. <laughs> um, so we have partnered with a lot of our public. You know, like I said, we've we've built a lot of really great relationships with a lot of cool people in the industry. The board game industry is one of the coolest places that I've ever had the pleasure of being involved in, and the people who work in this industry are absolutely phenomenal and helpful. Like we were talking a little bit about that before, um, and we. There's a ton of content creator promo Kickstarters, and we, I didn't. Wanted to put a unique twist <laughs> yeah, on things. I, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't uh, want to do the same thing again, so we contacted them to see what can we that's exclusive. What does our audience want? Like, this, the whole reason we're doing this, this is definitely a passion project for us. We all have full time day jobs, um, is we're trying to do cool stuff for the community. So, we're going to be doing the Kickstarter to raise some funds. We would really like to get out to more uh, regional conventions. We would like to partner to put on a lot more uh, live play events. Like we were just at D uh, Dice Tower Con, and we partnered with Andrew Smith from the Family Gamers to put on a Tiny Towns uh, Play to Win event. We partnered with Yellow and put Josh in his unicorn onesie to host a <laughs> life-size King of Tokyo. Uh, you must send me a picture just so that I can put it down there for people to see. Oh, that would we will. He's in a top hat, so it's great. Um, what else? Do, oh, we partnered with uh, Kurt Covert with Smirk and Dagger. We did Life Size Roll for Your Life Candyman, mm -hmm. and I take my Roll for Your Life Candyman game seriously. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a lot of uh, bumps and bruises oh, after this. One. I, I did get elbowed by Anne. <laughs> Look, man, it's my candy cane. But the thing is, the fact of the matter is, we we like to do these things, and we like to be innovative with the technology that we use. Um, I'm not really great at technology. I'm a CPA by trade, so I'm good with making sure money stretches, and, and these guys are too. But it's fun to come up with the weird ideas and then watch Matt, who is an engineer, and Josh put together crazy stuff. And that's great with the live events because live events are really great for people who are in person, but we're Twitch streamers, and we want to make sure that the people at home are involved too. So we'd like to explore new technologies uh, and use new equipment to try and increase the immersiveness of our show so i think i think that's kind of where we're going yeah the end goal really is just to bring the best product possible to all of our viewers whether that be more content with the different uh, convention coverage and stuff like that and better equipment to just make the experience kind of more pleasurable on the whole right that that's kind of that's kind of amazing i mean i knew that you were starting your kickstarter but i didn't realize it was the live plays that was kind of driving it so, so I'm an idea guy. I want to, I want to pitch this for you. So, um, I think you could probably pull this off cheaply and affordably, but I think we need to make, um, moo dungeon. Okay. And basically what it is, is you have to oh, go okay. through a dungeon as a cow and you have to dress up in a, like a cow onesie and you have to try and get through the dungeon as a cow and you can only use your that, hoof and don't that sounds let it go. utterly fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I can only spot a true fan of this show. No, no rim shot, Dan. You do not get that button. <laughs> oh, we're really looking, I'm looking for the button. You're looking I think that would be hysterical. But you know, hey, I'm just saying. See, there might be some branding issues. Like instead of chips, we can give out cow chips. You know, I think that there's a whole there's a whole way to run this. You know. I would worry about some of the sanitary elements with that. Um, but, you know, maybe we could even partner with, like, Chick-fil-A or something. It's not Rocky you Mountain know? Oysters. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> that could be the expansion. <laughs> I 
think it's good. But like at that, those crazy fun ideas. That's what I love about doing the show. So, you know, you're sitting around with your friends or the people that you're forced to be with. In my case, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> you know, it would be really funny if we got a life-size cardboard cut out of Matt. Wouldn't that be hilarious? And then these two go and make a life-size cardboard cut out of Matt. Like the dumb ideas that you just spew out come to life around these yeah, two, and, and that's a lot of fun. That that turns into an army of miniature-sized <laughs> me's being placed around exhibitors' booths in <laughs> Origin and Dice Tower Con to advertise when our show is going. On. I mean, Mattbot is coming next. Oh, Jesus. But you know what's funny is I, I do kind of feel like like Matt and I kind of have this... We, we have the... Uh, the, the the cheesy talk show vibe thing going. So I, I can appreciate that, you know. I, I have a, a black sequin jacket that is yet to appear that's going to be for an award show someday, I think. I don't know what we're going to award yet, but it'll be someday, I'm thinking. I, I like that planning ahead of the wardrobe, though. That's definitely, I, I'm on that same wavelength as you, yeah. so I could definitely appreciate it. You know, like, I will over, find a use for this. We've taken over Josh's living room, and we've also taken over the front closet, which is currently full of myriad costumes uh <laughs> one of the things that the guys love to do and we, we've done i've jumped in on a few um are skits so okay. with viewers if they if they tip to a certain amount or like something happens in the show these skits will play so which ones have you done so far you've done the which, which ones are we allowed to talk about uh like what what's the rating for this stream <laughs> or this this broadcast uh <laughs> go right ahead that's the rating. all right cool so it, it really all started with uh, we had the idea of doing these alert videos uh, that were like green screen background videos that after certain tip goals were triggered, they would automatically play in the background. Or someone follows. Yeah. Subscribe. So, so we, we, made, that we made some cute ones where like, you know, you follow a balloon comes up from the bottom of the screen. Or if you subscribe like me, I pop out from the top of the screen facing down and like I wave and it's super cute. But like, you know, we had let's make some ridiculous ones for <laughs> some like higher dollar higher yeah. dollar tips and that evolved or devolved if you will into joshua wearing a hula skirt a coconut bra and a horse head no, no, mask. it was just the coconut bra oh and the skirt and i just kind of did okay. a little hula dance across the screen and someone tipped like 50 bucks or something there you go something just unexpected and and, and funny and then i had a horse head mask and i pulled it out and i put it on with this outfit not meant to record anything. No, nope, but I'm a, I'm a great friend and saw the opportunity of him doing and dancing along to the Baby Shark song while wearing this outfit. And I recorded it. Yeah. And uh, eventually <laughs> this discussion made its way onto the stream yeah. and people were asking Joshua, what do we need to do to see this video? How much will you sell your soul for? How much will I sell my dick for? And I gave them a number. And yeah. it was, and they easily crushed that number. Yeah, and we showed that video, and I don't know why I think they have like a love hate relationship. Like it's just, it's one of those things that are so bad, it's so good. <laughs> why is Grandpa right. Shark so aggressive? <laughs> Grandpa Shark's just a mean old aggressive man. Just, <laughs> I get progressively aggressive throughout the song, and uh, my horse head flat just like flop it around. It's just, it's, it's a whole ordeal. But your guys' production quality of those skits has gotten much better because after that, you did that stupid song with the yelling. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that song. I, hate I don't it know, so much. Chris, are you familiar with, uh, it's kind of like a meme song, but it's some cowboys and they're singing. And then this gentleman appears kind of half transparent in the sky and he's just screaming to music. Yeah. It's, it's a meme. It's just, I think the meme's called Ah. Yeah, if, if you just Google wow. Ah, I don't know how many A's and how many H's, but, you know, <laughs> a large number of them. You got uh, you'll, you'll get the context of it, but we decided to reproduce that with us in our onesies, wearing purple cowboy hats. Uh, mm -hmm. There's one where Joshua bought a, what I believe is a children's-sized Spider-Man singlet. <laughs> I, bought, I bought a Chinese extra-large Spider-Man singlet, so which is like size. a child like, size, basically <laughs> a child size. Yes, uh, and I wore that for a thing. And Spider-Man, yeah, it it, it uh, is very revealing of everything. And nobody wants to see that. No, uh, you guys uh, did. I got to see it though. You guys did the performance. <laughs> yeah, we walked five hundred miles, and then we walked five hundred more. That was that's a good one. Mm. As long uh, as it's not stuck in the tape deck of your Fiero playing over and over and over and over again. 
Exactly. That sounds terrible. Now I understand where your deep-seated childhood problems come from. Oh, no, that's just because I was a child. (laughs) (laughs) But needless to say, we've, you know, we, we do try to keep things professional on certain streams. And then we've definitely got our on the rails and our off the rails moments on, on our stream. So obviously when we're showing off people's games on kicks, you know, that are on Kickstarter, we're not going to show that side of twist gaming. Uh, We're not going to have Kula Josh uh, dance in the baby shark in the middle of the stream. Right. But then when we're playing a campaign of kingdom death, where uh, Chad is making the most ridiculous decisions, naming their characters uh, after various foods and articles of clothing (laughs) and presidential electoral Can- electoral candidates yeah uh that's kind of Which just a drop in the bucket stories, really yeah. there's uh. a there's a time and a place for everything right absolutely i mean so our spotlight streams we, we've talked about one side of it we've talked about the being goofballs but our spotlight streams um so we like to be able to show off games that are coming out to kickstarter or brand new on the market it goes back to the whole giving our audience a front row seat to the industry and what's coming on um and it they're not reviews we don't review games we do full playthroughs we have our insiders you know come on usually to the publisher to the designer or somebody to play with us on the show um, mm-hmm. and our audience can come in and ask questions and we've gotten to play how many spotlight shows did you say we've done 147 what was that number 174 174 spotlights or something like that wow games. We've shown a lot of different games. Though. Yeah, and we each of us has very different tastes when it comes to games. So it's nice for our audience to be like, "Hey, I'm a salty mf'er. I like the games that Matt likes," um, <laughs> or "I have analysis paralysis, and Anne can't seem to figure out how to take her turn. That game must be for me." So we we like to provide again back to the immersive experience and a way for our audience to see new games and decide whether or not they're going to like that game by coming on, talking to the people who make the game, seeing how we play the game, and then we do like a first impression session where we talk about the game. So that's more of like our more serious side of I guess of the show is the mm-hmm. best way to put it. Absolutely. Um, and it's cool to be able to do that on the Kickstarter campaigns. Oh, I'm so getting this in here. You ready? Sure. Because we get to see a lot of games that are on Kickstarter. And what's cool about that is a lot of the promo, you know, the games are still in produ- uh, proto- <laughs> prototype state. Games can be made before they're released. Like when we had Sen on to play Legends of Korra with us. You're really squeezing this one in. Oh, I'm so doing it. This is her favorite board game story from our Spotlight stream. So Ever. go ahead, Anne. Take so in Sen Legends Luthim, of Korra. I guess, I'm guessing. Yes. Yes. Uh, so in Legends of Korra, it's a, a head-on game where you're fighting in the arena. and The pro-bending arena. Thank yeah. you. Look, you know, when you're the winner, it doesn't matter what it's called. And what we had learned about the game was that there was a particular move you could make that utilized all of the components of the game and that you would still need more components of the game to complete your attack on your opponent, which is important stuff to know before you go to final retail version. And we found that out when I murdered Matt in this game. <laughs> I, I, I think she found like a one in 100 chance of using all the tokens. It was so good. They're yeah. like, yeah, this simply doesn't happen. And then everyone would just like you are like, no, nope, we need more tokens. And so more they, tokens are needed. They added more tokens to the game yeah. because Anne completely spanked me in the game. Be- nice. But it becomes immersive. Like the viewers were there. We get to join in. <laughs> They're like, hey, you know, this happened on the show. Or we had another work call to adventure where I made a comment that was not so popular about the game and the audience got to find out live on stream how I myself just me felt about this particular thing about the game and it became a conversation on the campaign as well we like to have we like being the people that spark the conversation right you don't have to be the definitive voice and offer all the opinion you just want to let's talk about it let's figure this out let's find it before before it becomes a huge problem and it's in people's hands, right? So that's kind of cool yeah. that you get the chance to to do that and play that. Kind of like prototyping, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Just live in front of a bunch of people. Yeah, that you can't fake you can't there's it's nice having the ability to go back and do production work for a video, but when you're live, you don't get to fake your reactions, you don't get to fake your emotions, you don't get to fake how you're feeling in the moment. That's why there's typically like a warning message that we give to the publishers that we work with. Yeah. And we're like, hey, PG-13. listen, like keep it PG-13, but at the same time, like our reactions were, I'm not that good of an actor. <laughs> so we we're, we can't edit out 
are true reactions to things. So, I mean, I think that's part of what some of the appeal is as well, because we're not changing, we're not editing how we're responding to a game. It's pretty easy to pick up if we're having a miserable time on something. Yeah. Even if we don't outwardly say, this game stinks, I don't like it. And it's okay for me to have a miserable time if you're... I mean, it's okay for any of us to like not like something and the other one of us to like it. We don't all like the same thing. Right. And, you know, sometimes you do forget that the camera's even there. Like, let's yeah. be honest. Mm -hmm. When you're playing a game, you're in the moment, you're having conversations, the camera disappears to a point. So I'm curious, actually, uh, not to, you wouldn't name names, but has any publisher ever been concerned about that, you know, that disclaimer that you guys are, are going to be candid and, and not necessarily positive? No, and I think that this is going to touch on a sensitive conversation that's gone around in our industry about reviewers and paid reviewers and sponsorships and whatnot and who wants what from a reviewer or a content creator, um, which I'll wade into. We're honest. And I think that that's got to be said up front. I think that that's part of our appeal, right? Like if I'm a publisher and I'm using Twist Gaming as a marketing vehicle, I value the genuineness that comes with the show. I value the fact that it's live streamed because um, I want my audience, because when the game gets into the hands of the people, I want them to have gotten what they're expecting. And I want my game to go to the right people. So I know that I have three hosts on the show who each have different tastes. Uh, you know, Call to Adventure might be a good example because I said something about that game with the um, light and dark tracker uh, that the publishers were like, well, look, this is the expectation of, of that game. I didn't like it, just me. Matt and Josh, they didn't mind it. But if you're a gamer like me and this is something that you value then now you've seen it before, you know, either it's hit retail or, or it's come to your hands. But if it's not something that you're so worried about, you're like, no, nah, I kind of more like Josh, then it's not an issue. And when you're on the business side of it as either, you know, a designer or a publisher and you're showcasing your game, I think you, above all else, you're not so worried about a negative review, right? You're, you're more worried about an honest opinion getting out. I also awesome. think a lot of the public we had that if we had a negative or someone had a negative review, it's typically not the whole team. They've still worked with us to do more stuff and stuff like they they haven't said, Oh, you guys kinda gave me a slightly negative review, we're not gonna work. like we still work with them. Yeah, like Brother we've, Wise, we've for example, customers. is one of our partners for our Kickstarter. Yeah. Um we're getting called to adventure promo cards. Yeah. Uh and we did a whole there was a it was a hot topic on the Kickstarter when we did our Kickstarter and it was so it, it the publishers and everyone since we kind of know it's a small niche community and everyone knows each other and yeah. and as long as we're honest and not we're not scathing in we're not, our yeah. reviews yeah i mean we try to keep things positive i mean we'll be mm -hmm. honest but we try to keep things positive but going back to what Ann was saying like bringing up like the legend of cora thing uh <laughs> is that on the flip side if there's a if there's a component of a game or a me mechanism of a game that we just really don't like we'll address it we'll say hey i think this play is kind of wonky We've had that happen before, too, where publishers have, during the Kickstarter, gone back and said, we're going to address this, we're going to fix this within the game, and yeah. then make like a minor tweak to it to potentially solve that problem as well. So it, it, that's one of the really cool things about showing off games that are on Kickstarter yeah. versus something that's already on in the market. And two, I think with our format, when just like with you, Chris, like we're here on your show talking to you, when our guests come on our show for our spotlight, it's a conversation. So it's not it's not like blind playtesting. It's it's literally a conversation about the person's game and it's their opportunity too to sit here and talk about what they think is so great about the game that maybe we're we're not seeing. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> and then some people just need to understand the context and what something's made and put on that filter. That's all. I mean it's not I don't think it's any great problem to say that, you know, one person gets paid for doing a thing and another person doesn't because, you know, as far as I know, most people are transparent about that. And if that's a concern, then pay attention to the people who are. That's that's really as simple as it is, right? Like there's and no I, there's no consumer reports for us running around spending thousands and thousands of dollars on games and playing them unbiased and even that wouldn't work because they're so different. And I think that it goes back. So I mentioned it before, but I'm a CPA. So the, the whole financials and everything on the back end, this is my wheelhouse. Let's talk about spreadsheets all day long. <laughs> it, 
this is a passion project of ours. And for the three years, none of us have, <laughs> there's, there's no paycheck. <laughs> there's, <laughs> you know, all of the money that do, we, any nonprofit still needs money to run. So right. the sponsorships by publishers, you know, that's fantastic. That's great. That goes to overhead. It's people who are saying, hey, I love the things that you're doing. I want you to continue what you're doing. And it's what's helped fund equipment. It's what's helped fund getting out to conventions. It's what hel has helped fund the community that we have. It, it's not, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you you have a nice game because you gave, because you sponsored a show for a week. Because then, too, then I'm slimy. Like, it's important for me to be a good businesswoman. And I think that what makes a good businesswoman is being honest and transparent. Makes sense. Totally does. So, so let's go out with a high note. So, yeah. All right. So let's start with Matthew. Matthew, on the show, what has been your favorite moment to date? Oh, boy. Favorite moment to date. You put me on the spot here. I, oh, think, totally. honest, <laughs> <laughs> I think honestly, I, and we touched on it before, um, is when we were doing our Twitch plays, Kingdom Death, and unbeknownst to us, um, we had some we, a couple of the people from the Kingdom Death team watching the stream. Uh, we found out after the fact they put it on their in their studio every once in a while and watch us live. But I mean, that's cool. But uh, we had an issue on the stream where we were trying to get a rules clarification, and we were doing it rules as written. Rules as written. Uh, some of our guests were arguing that it should be another way. It's murder. So we had murder on our timeline. We drew another murder card, and everyone in chat's going, well, not everyone, but some people in chat were going, oh, you can't have murder twice in one year. That's against oh, the rules. And so Josh and I were like, I don't know. It doesn't say that you can't. And then one of our viewers says, check Adam or check the Kingdom Death Twitter. And so we paused the stream, which I mean, it's not really pausing live, but we went to the <laughs> Twitter live on the stream. Excuse me. And uh, we, we looked at it, and Adam wrote with, you know, tagged us in the post, and it's murder can happen twice in one year. Double murder. Yay. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we had an influx of people jump into our chat and like, Hey, what are you guys doing? And you know, we picked up a bunch of new viewers that way, but I thought that that was like kind of a surreal moment like that. And I thought that was really cool. Awesome. So of course, Anne, it's on to you. Ah, um, I've had a lot of little high notes. I think that getting to meet Don Eskridge was one of like a really cool moment for me because it was one of the first games that I had played. So we got to meet him and hang out with him at uh, BGG. Uh, I got to see Black Hole Council when it was still in prototype stage. That was fantastic. Um, for your first interview. I got to, oh my Our God. very first COD interview. Chris Cluey. Yep. I, uh, yes. My very first interview <laughs> wow. ever was with Chris Cluey. Uh, he was which one of my favorite games, uh, Twilight of the Gods. He had designed it, and it got published by Victory Point Games. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys, Alan is great over there. They're they're fantastic people. Um, I I don't watch sports ball. Sports ball. Sports ball. Sports ball. So I had no idea who Chris Cluey was, and Matt was like, Matt was home, and he was like, Is that? Ask him if he's Chris Cluey. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was fanboying a little bit back at home, and I'm just like, and give me an autograph. <laughs> so Chris Clay was a kicker for the Minnesota Vikings. He's Hunter. also sorry. He's also a giant nerd, very intelligent, smart guy, cool. He's got a great Twitter, so follow him. He's cool. Um, and they went back and in the final production copy of Twilight of the Gods, we got a thank you, and that was an awesome thing too. I love little things like that, like feeling like part of the community is always great. It's, it's those little moments of appreciation that make it all yeah. worth doing, right? Yeah. Those little. So speaking of little, Josh, what's yours? <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, Matt took one of the good ones. Uh, it's really our Twitch plays. I always find the bet like just the crazy things that chat comes up to with and, and things yeah. like that. So we had one. I think the best is so Matt and I are getting ready to go into a stream. And we're at the end of our campaign. We know we're done for. We can't, like, we're going to do a Hail Mary, see if we can recover. It was it was a dumpster fire. Oh, yeah, complete dumpster fire. We're like, all right, if, it's like, if, uh, like, a 1% chance we might make this work. So we get ready. We start the stream. We say, hey, this is what we're going to do. And this is during the Kickstarter of that Kingdom Death ad. And then Adam put in the update, oh, if Twist Gaming wins their fight tonight, I'm going to unlock new stuff. If they lose, something else will happen. Uh, we got influx <laughs> with, I 
think oh, we got this like six, seven hundred viewers. Six, seven hundred live, 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 live concurrent, concurrent, viewers, concurrent yeah. viewers. Wow. All watching us to make sure we won. Where Matt and I were just like, we did. We're, we're going to lose. <laughs> we had one of the designers on with us. It was a, it was a four or five hour stream of just complete chaos. Uh, but it was just wonderful chaos. It, it was just, it was just a surreal moment of having that whole community together and just like seeing everyone try to work together to do something and see how it was done. It, it, was, it was just that amazing time. Um, and we've had a lot of those moments, but yeah. that's just kind of one that was like one of the first that, that of that magnitude of that magnitude, and it was really cool. Awesome. Well, guys, ladies, this has been a ton of fun. I've had a blast getting to know you guys a little bit more. And I think we should hang around maybe next week. I think we should play a game together. I think we can do that. I think that would be cool. If you're out for it. I mean, it won't be live stream, so I don't know how that'll work out for you. But if, if you forget about it and turn it on in about a week and a half, it'll feel live. I promise. That works. Cool. So, so where can people find out about Twist Gaming? And most importantly, how should they go looking for the Kickstarter? Everyone make sure that you follow us on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and come chat with us on our Discord channel where... Sometimes we hang out with cool people like Chris from Game All Night. Uh, but no, we're available down at the bottom there, twistgaming.tv. Our Facebook is Twist Gaming. Twitter's wonky. It's gaming underscore twist. Yeah. Couldn't get that one. Twitch is Twist Gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure that you follow, uh, check out our Kickstarter. It is KS, KS for Kickstarter, dot twistgaming.tv. Yeah. Yep. And uh, there's a little newsletter sign up or and actually i'll probably just read it to the kickstarter when this goes live yep. it'll be live right now while you guys are watching it'll be live. probably be. that's awesome Hopefully. and are you guys going to make it to any cons um well i mean obviously con season has just started right now hopefully we'll see you again well i found out you were at pax i didn't see you there but we'll make sure to fix that this year yeah, um, definitely, Chris. And if you want to come and join and do any, you know, co-events, let us know. We're going to be at Gen Con coming up. Uh, cool. We're probably going to be at Metatopia, which is up in New Jersey uh, for one of our smaller cons. And we'll be heading over to PAX Unplugged as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we will definitely have to hook up. I mean, that's our local con. Metatopia, I don't know exactly where it is, but it might be worth checking out. Uh, uh, Newark. New outside of Newark. It's not that no. I don't know. Joyzy. Joyzy somewhere. Joyzy somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It's all good. It's all good. We, it's a state. You know, it's funny. Funny thing about the state, right? So, you know, you, you kind of know this more if you're local, right? Like we have bridges that go across the Delaware that go into Jersey. Um, it's the main dividing factor, right? Well, Jersey's free to get into, but you have to pay to get out. And you know, that's, <laughs> there's a reason for that, ladies and gentlemen. But this has been a blast. Thank you so much for being on, everyone. Um, we're going to have to play a game next week. I think uh, I, I hooked up with James Hudson and uh, got us a couple copies of Pitch Storm. So we'll have to see how that goes. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. So, much so tune in next week. And thank you all for being on. Yeah. Thank you, thank Chris. You so we much. appreciate you having us. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Dan, thank for you, Dan. providing some great drinks. <laughs> and thank you, at home for watching. We'll see you next time on Game All Night. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Join us next week when we play a game with the guests. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Be sure to follow us on all forms of social media. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are the best ways possible. Simply find us by searching for Game All Night Show. And of course, check out our website at GameAllNightShow.com. This week and each week is made possible through the generous support of donors like these. Be sure to subscribe below and check out our latest videos. Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com. You know, I tried to hire on an employee for Dan to control. They're called interns. Interns, but uh, you know that didn't that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I became more attached to the monkey than Dan, but you know. Hey. I'm so thankful that the camera's not on right now. Yeah. Well, it, it Josh's might be. pants are around his ankles. And just got a good eye full of butt crack. Beautiful. That angry octopus thing is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> angry octopus. Angry octopus. Angry octopus.